Now, let me show you something with these. Uh, these are the exact same four out of the warm-up, but I do want to show you uh, a way to help you solve for this because uh, this is why it works. We can rewrite 4 as 2 squared. Now, since these two sides of your equation have the same base, their exponents must be the same. So x must equal 2. I can rewrite 27 as 3 cubed. So same base, their exponents must be the same. Same thing with 25. I can rewrite that as 5 squared. So that means x must be 2. Over here, I can rewrite, bless you, 1 fourth as 4 to the negative 1. So x is equal to negative 1. So that's technically the way that you would solve it. Okay, you already knew what the answer was. But when they get a little bit more complicated, this is what you need to do. Okay, if that had been um, 2 to the x plus 1 is equal to 4, and you had to solve for x, okay, that one's not quite so clear cut, so I would rewrite 4 as 2 squared, and then their exponents must be equal to each other, so that says that for this problem, x equals 1, which makes sense if you think about it. Okay. You know that 2 squared is 4, so in order for x plus 1 to be 2, x has to be 1. Okay. So that's how you would handle those problems. Hmm? You subtract 1. You've got to subtract 1 to solve for x. Seven to the x equals four. Can I rewrite four so that it's seven to some power? No. I really if you, if you can, you're smarter than I am, because I can't write four as seven to some power. Okay? They have nothing in common in terms of exponentials. Okay? Um what about seven to the x equals negative seven? 7 to the x equals negative 7. Can we come up with an answer for that one? Think about it for a minute. 7 raised to some power is negative 7. One times negative 1? Okay. Negative 1, if, if x were negative 1, negative exponents move our answer to the denominator, so that would be equal to 1 7. So, I, I like that thought, it's a good thought, but it doesn't work out. Zero, anything to the zero power is one. Can we come up with a power here? Can we raise positive seven to any exponent and get negative seven? No, you can't raise a positive number to an exponent and get a negative number. This one has no solution. Yeah, I know. Tricky, right? Okay, so that one has no solution. Let's go back to E over here. 7 to the x equals 4. So, just in general, if you have an equation that you're having to solve, and you don't know how to solve it, what is something that you can always do to solve an equation? Guess and check. Huh? Guess and check. Guess and check. Yeah, well, guess and check would work, yeah. Right. It. You can graph any equation you want to, and you can solve it that way. So let's do that. Let's graph. Now, if we have 7 to the x is equal to 4, okay, what do we do to graph that? We plug the left side into y1, 7 to the x. We plug the right side into y2, 4. We graph it, and what are we looking for when we graph it? Where they intersect, because that's where they're equal, right? That's where they have the same y value. So, uh, intersect, in case you've forgotten, is second trace. Intersect is number five. Guess what? The nice thing about intersect, you really don't have to do anything. You just press enter three times. And here's the answer. Okay. Now, we do want to keep several decimal places here, so let's round to like four numbers after the decimal place. 
So x is equal to approximately 0.7124. That is our answer. And you can check it. Okay, you can check it. Plug it back into the original equation. 7 raised to the 0.7124. Now, it's not going to give us exactly 1 because we had to, or exactly 4 because we had to round. But isn't that number that, that close enough to 4, right? Yes, ma'am. these things if you have any issues with your calculator. Now, what if we didn't think about the fact 7, seven to the x is equal to negative 7? If we don't think about the fact that we can't raise 7 to an exponent and get negative 7, so if we were using that same approach that we just used, okay, well, all we did was change the right side of that equation, so we need to change our y2 and graph it. Here's our graph of 7 to the x. Here's negative 7. Do those come anywhere close to intersecting? No, they don't. If they don't intersect, they don't have a solution. Okay, they don't have a solution. So, still the conclusion here is no solution. Okay, well, those have been very, very simple equations. What happens when we add a little bit more stuff in here? Okay, what if we've got some stuff going on in the exponent? We're adding or subtracting something on the end. How do we deal with that? Okay, well, anytime we're trying to solve for x, we're trying to get x by itself, right? Same approach here. We're still trying to get x by itself. So, we need to move that pi. That pi needs to go to the other side and get out of our way. So, subtract 5 from both sides. 5 to the 2x is equal to 125. Now, we pause at this step. And we say, okay, my left side has a base of 5. Can I write my right side so that it has base 5? Can I express 125 as 5 to some power? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We sure can. What is it? 5. 5 to the third. 5 to the third is 125. We have the same base, so that means their exponents must be equal to each other. Now it's not an exponential equation anymore. Now it's just a linear equation. Divide by 2, our answer is x equals 3 halves. Like any other equation, guys, you can check it. Go back to the original. Plug it in. Okay, go back to the original and plug it in. So we have 5 raised to, but just be careful here, you got to put parentheses because it's 2 times x. So we've got to get all that stuff in the exponent. 2 times x is 3 over 2. Close your parentheses because that's all that's in the exponent. Plus 5. Let's see if that equals 1 third. It does. So we solve the correct. This is better than that other stuff. Anyway. Maybe. Does anybody have an opinion? Okay, good. Okay, let's look at D. We have 2 times 3 to the negative x. Minus 4 is equal to 2. Again, trying to get x by itself. So let's add 4 to both sides first. Now, the parentheses there really don't matter. You can have them. You don't have to have them. You may see it written both ways. Uh, what do I need to do now? Remember I told you the other day, you Cannot multiply that 2 and that 3. I know it's really tempting. Yes, we need to divide by that 2. We've got to move that 2 over as well. So let's divide by 2. Well, that's nice. Because now we have 3 to the negative x is equal to 3. If something doesn't have an exponent, what's it understood to be? 1. So that says negative x is equal to 1. So positive x is equal to? Negative 1. 
loss of x is equal to negative 1. So quick little synopsis here, tips slash steps for solving these exponential equations. 